down the way. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we have three functions. What we're trying to do is identify the domain. Now remember, the domain, let's write this down. Domain, the set of all x values that make up the function, OK? x values, as in the same thing in a function, is the input, what you plug into the function. So what I'm saying is, remember, input, what can I plug in for x? Can I plug in negative 1 into this function and get an answer? Yeah. What about f of 100? Yeah. Is there any number that I cannot choose to plug into the function f of x equals x and not get an answer? No. No. So this is what we'd say, all real numbers is the domain. Every single number you can possibly think of, you can plug in as an input, and you will get an output. Does that make sense? There's no restrictions, any number. But now let's look at a problem like this. Here, we start having some restrictions. Because yes, I could plug in the number 4, right? And I get a solution. But what happens when I plug in negative 4? Well, in the real number system, I do not have a solution for the square root of negative 4, right? So this is no real solution. I know you guys could say imaginary, but there's no real solution. So the domain is all the x values that you can plug into this function. Well, the domain for this is going to be all numbers that have to be positive. So we could write that as x is greater than or equal to 0. The domain is x is great, all values that are greater than or equal to 0. Does that make sense? So now, what you guys have on your homework is like examples like this. x equals x minus 1. So what if I said, what is the d domain of this? All you guys do is take the radicand and make it greater than or equal to 0. Then solve for x. x is greater than or equal to sorry, 1. That's it. That's your domain. Done. So just remember that the domain of a radical function is always going to be always radical. Everything inside your radical, your radicand, has to be greater than or equal to 0. So all you do is set it greater than or equal to 0 and solve. Now let's go into a rational function. This is the reciprocal function here. We can plug in any number we want. We can now, for rational, we can plug in positives. We can plug in negatives. Right? But what is the one number we cannot plug in, which I just wrote? Zero. <laughs> is 0. You cannot divide by 0. Right? So when I'm saying the func what is the domain, the domain of this one is all real numbers except x cannot equal 0. Now, in Algebra 2, I probably would have accepted this as an answer. It means it's saying the right thing. All real numbers except x cannot equal 0. All right? Um, however, um, we're going to use our interval notation. So let's do another example. What about if f of x equals 1 over x minus 2 times x plus 3? And if I said, what's the domain? Well, again, all you simply need to do to identify the domain is identify what values don't work. And the values that don't work are which makes these, the denominator 0. So all you do is you say x minus 2 equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0. So do you guys agree with me that this function, this function, it's all real numbers except x cannot equal 2 and x cannot equal negative 3. Do you guys agree with me? Yes. Because those two numbers, when you plug them in, makes the denominator 0. So to write this in interval notation, we'll say all real numbers. That means from negative infinity to the number 2. However, is 2 a part of the domain? No, because 2 would make it 0, which is undefined. So therefore, it's not included. So it's going to be a parenthesis. Then union, we're going to go from 2 to negative 3. Union, oops, I'm sorry, crap. You always go from the smallest value. Should go to negative 3. My bad. We're going from smallest numbers to positive numbers. So negative 3, union 2, and then 2 to infinity. 
That's how we would write the domain. And on a test, that's how you guys would see the domain. You would not see it written like this or all real numbers except x cannot equal 2, x cannot equal 3. Okay? It's important for you guys to understand that like verbally, but it's going to be written like this. And that's what I want you guys to understand. Yes? It's not a part of the domain. Yep, exactly. Now, what about if I change the problem to this? Just think about it for a second. Does that change the domain? <coughs> no, the domain is still going to be our values. Well, if you guys remember, the domain is still going to be our values that we can plug into x that are not going to make our denominator 0. <coughs> But then also, yeah, we can't, still, still can't plug in numbers that are, we can take the square root of. So now it's going to be greater than 0, but then also are not a part of these two solutions. Okay. So we can add different qualifiers. Now, fortunately for you guys' homework, 